So when you're on a desert river, the water's frequently really silty, unless there's a dam shortly upstream of you. It ends up looking like this. Um, and before you can filter this water, it'll just clog your filter normally. So you have to let the sediment all settle out. This is actually pretty decent water. Sometimes you can have some really hardcore chocolate milk water. Um, and my favorite thing to help expedite this process is called Water Wizard. Um, you can wait for the sediment to settle out all by itself, which will take a while, depending on the size of the particles, maybe overnight it would take. But if you need water right away, you can expedite that process with Water Wizard. I like to put my Water Wizard in an old Aquamira bottle um, because it has a screw top lid and it's a dropper. So I suck it up into this bottle at home. It comes in a jar, which is less convenient because I want a dropper. So the ratio is seven drops per gallon. And this looks like about a gallon. So I'm gonna put about seven drops. All that good. Now, I want to stir it up. It doesn't matter if your stick has silt on it because the silt is just gonna settle out anyway. And now we wait. So the reason that Water Wizard works and helps stuff settle out faster is it's a flocculent. It causes all the little particles to stick together and form clumps, which makes them heavier and they sink out to the bottom. There's another type of product you can use for this called alum powder, which is more widely available, but I like Water Wizard a lot better because alum leaves kind of a nasty taste in the water. So it's at least clear enough to run through a filter now at this point. Um, but we have to be able to get it out of this bucket or container somehow. Uh, we definitely can't pour it out of here because that'll just cause all the stuff to get stirred up again and fall back into the water. One strategy I use for this is using a smart water bottle since they're really common for a backpacking water bottle. You can vacuum up water and this is useful for a lot of different things, not just for this. It's actually probably not the best way to do this. I'll show another way. Water bottle, you're gonna squeeze it. Squeeze out as much air as you can. Stick the mouth in the water and re-expand it by squeezing it on the opposite axis. And here's why this isn't the best way to do this because water is gonna spill out when I take it out. But then the water bottle is decently full so you can squeeze out even more air. And do it again. water bottle's almost full. And if so the better way to get water out of here as opposed to vacuuming it up with a smart water bottle is to siphon it through a hose into a bladder. And to do that we first need to get it higher. So I'm going to lift it up carefully trying not to disturb the floaties at the bottom. So this is a trick that Daniel's been doing forever and he taught me how to do it. So he can explain Better than I can. <laughs> yeah. So first thing you want to do from your empty bladder, ideally there's a little bit of water in there, and you can get to where the tube is full of water, which will allow the siphon to engage. So there's water in my tube, and then once the water is in the tube, <clears throat> and you lower the bladder below the level of water in your source, gravity will take it from the source, in this case the jar, into the bladder. And depending on the size of your tube, it changes how fast that happened. But as you can see, the water level in the jar is going down and you can't see it, but the water in the bladder is increasing. This is just a nice, really clean way to get water out of the jar because unlike sucking it up into the smart, you don't get a lot of current in the jar. And so you can get almost all of the water out without stirring up all the sediment that's in the bottom of the jar. 
It's been flocculated. Another thing you could do involving a hose is simply pump the water out with a pump style filter. But we don't usually carry those because they're heavy. So on backpacking trips, we don't like them as much for that. Once the water is in the bag, it still has to be treated because it's not necessarily safe to drink yet. It's just clarified. Uh, so the best way we found to do that is just to treat it with Aquamira once it's in the bladder. Or you could pour it into something else and filter it into something else. The original application of this trick that Daniel's actually been doing forever is just using it to fill up camelback bladders more than you can fill them via the screw top lid. So he says that you can always fit four liters in a three liter camelback if you need to carry that much water. And you can do it for fun stuff like filling up your bladder while it's still in your backpack or something like that. Just starting to suck up a little bit of dirt, so that means we're almost done. I might be able to extend it by tilting the jar. But that's it. And there it is. Almost all the water. It's pretty su successful. Pretty good. Everything that's left is extra dirty. <laughs> that's all. So if you're on a backpacking trip and you don't have a large bucket, you can actually do the settling process just in a bottle, like a smart water bottle. So it's seven drops per gallon, once again, um, that means two drops per liter, roughly. Just two, keep recording, put the cap on, shake it up as much as I can, get some bubbles in there, stir it up, go up and down. And then with this, I am going to put this upside down to settle. So the reason we put it upside down is because we want sediment to settle towards the cap and we're actually going to squeeze it out through the threads. Um, one of my first questions when I started doing this was like, will the sediments be able to squeeze through the threads? And the answer is yes, they totally can. In fact, you can do this with really thick chocolate milk water. Um, the water on the San Juan is actually pretty clear to begin with, so was this necessary? Probably, but we've done it with some really gnarly thick water. Actually in the Grand Canyon, Daniel and I were on a trip where we got to a place where we expected to find potholes full of water, and instead the potholes were just full of wet gravel. So we actually dug up the gravel and let the chocolate milk water settle out into the hole. We filled bottles like this with super chocolatey water and let the sediment settle out. It was really deep. So the sediment was like this much of the volume of the water once it all settled out and we were still able to squeeze it out through the cap. Um, so when you do this the only thing the only trick to it really is you want to be gently applying pressure as you as you open the cap so the air doesn't suck back into the bottle so it has to be a squeezable bottle to do this I think. Um, so yeah just open the cap gently Dirty water comes out. Once it turns clear, close the cap without ever stopping a gentle squeeze. And now when you turn it upright, there's no dirt falling out. It's all just clear left over. Still gonna filter it, <laughs> but that's it. So now with decently clear water in our smart water bottle, we can screw on the filter. The Platypus Quick Draw is my favorite squeeze filter and it goes on a smart water bottle just fine. You can also pour this into something else or you can treat it another way like using Aquamira. But we're ready to squeeze it out. The clear container makes for a pretty sweet demonstration but you can also use a dry bag for this as long as you don't need it to be dry soon after and it's totally watertight. So if you're not going to use the water for drinking, if you're going to use it for cooking, then you're going to boil it. So you don't need to treat it with Aquamira or by filtering. You can just use a pot, and this is a nice pot. Just reach in there and carefully 
scoop up water. It's really clear, actually, you can see. Um, and that's totally clear enough and clean enough to use for food if you're gonna boil it. Because this is a totally viable way to just get water out of the bucket and then you can pour it into whatever you want.